Lego sure has milked the ever-living hell out of Ninjago, which means surely some of its offspring would eventually end up becoming a lost media. Two words that can send shivers down a person's spine. But what exactly is lost media? Lost media refers to a piece of media such as a movie or a video game that is either cancelled, missing or unavailable to the general public, essentially being lost to time because of improper documentation and preservation. With some of the most famous examples of lost media being Sonic Extreme, the original version of Shrek, Super Mario 128, Pokemon Live, James Cameron's Spider-Man movie, Electric Soldier Porygon, and Mean Girls on a Nintendo DS. Really cutting deep for this video. LEGO has of course had its fair share of lost media, including Next Night Season 5, a LEGO Island TV show, a LEGO movie produced by Blur Studios instead of Warner Bros, the many cancelled LEGO sets, the building and brick race, and relating to this video that you foolishly decided to watch, the lost original version of the Ninjago movie. The topic of lost media is extremely interesting to me and many other people, so it only felt right that Ninjago should get the same treatment as every other franchise by receiving its own spooky lost media video, going over most unknown pieces of lost media we know of. So without further ado, let us begin our look at Ninjago lost media, beginning with the many mobile apps now lost to time. The best way to keep your goblin of a child entertained is to throw an iPad on their face and let them play whatever app they want, so why not make it a Ninjago app? Ninjago has had 8 app games, not including Shadow of Ronin as that was mainly a console game thrown onto mobile. Starting with the first app game, we have Spinjitsu Scavenger Hunt from 2011. This game focused on the player defeating enemies by using the Spinjitsu spinners within the game, being able to customize and upgrade your ninja, with the player even being able to scan codes on Ninjago products for more upgrades. Interesting to see that LEGO was trying to integrate apps as far back as 2011. This game has since become lost media, as it has been delisted on the App Store, with so you not even being able to re-download it if you've already downloaded it like many other apps, as devices over iOS 11 do not support it. But thanks to the wonderful people of the Internet Archive, you can do a little bit of hacking and download all versions of the game onto a jailbroken iPhone under iOS 11. The same can be said about the second game released in 2012 that suffered the same fate, basically being the same game but now modeled after Rise of the Snakes instead of the Pilots, with the added feature of using the card game within the mobile app. Following 2012, we received another mobile game to tie into Season 2's final battle, with the game also being able to be played on LEGO.com. This game is very different from the previous two, as it involved the player controlling the six characters of Kai, Jay, Zayn, Lloyd, Cole, and unlockable Sensei Wu in a platform fighting game, with the goal of defeating Waves of the Stone Army. Unlike the previous two games, I actually played this one and it was pretty entertaining, which makes me sad to say that it has now become lost media, as it was delisted from the app store and cannot be downloaded from your previously downloaded page. I'm sure you can still find it on one of those terrible free web game sites however. I wouldn't recommend it though as you will most definitely get a virus. The game wasn't that good. Ninjago Rebooted was the next app game to be released in 2014. The game allowed the player to control Jay, Kai, Cole and Zane in story mode or in endless runner mode, either climbing up Borg Tower vertically or running down the tower halls horizontally as you unlock certain power-ups. Just like the final battle mobile game, I played this one too and again found it to be pretty fun and enjoyable. And also just like the final battle mobile game, it is also unable to be re-downloaded from the app store. It's just like Flappy Bird all over again. Guys, do not delete Ninjago Rebooted from your phone, you cannot re-download it. To tie in with Season 4 in 2015, the Tournament of Elements receives an app game on both Android and iOS, having a pretty large character roster which even included an Anaconda Klaus for some reason. This game functioned as a hack and slash arena fighter, with the player defeating hordes of enemies before getting to face a boss, unlocking the boss after defeating it. I was an avid player of this game and would say this is my favourite of the Lost Mobile games, as it just feels a lot more substantial. Unfortunately for Possession, it would not get the honour of getting a mobile app and they would instead skip right to Skyband. Guess the new Skybound was the superior season. I'm not going to go over this one as much as, well, we'd be here all day, and unlike the previously talked about apps, can still be downloaded on the App Store, by simply getting to your previously downloaded page if we downloaded the app before, and tapping the reinstall button. No matter how hard they tried, they just couldn't kill Skybound. The same goes for the last two Ninjago mobile games, the Wukur app in 2016 and the Ride Ninja app in 2019. Both have been delisted from the App Store, but can still be re-downloaded, just like Skybound. Now that you've distracted your goblin child with flashing lights on an iPad screen, why not encourage some healthy reading with our next lost media of the Ninjago manga? Yes, this exists and I don't know how to feel about it. The Ninjago manga, known by the title of Lego Lego Let's Lego Ninjago, god that sure is a name, was published by the manga magazine Koro Koro, with only the first issue being translated and documented and oh boy, what an experience it is. This manga series is meant to be a more comedic take on Ninjago, as you can clearly see here being written by Suzuki Sabakan. God knows I just butchered the hell out of that name, so Senor Sabakan, if you're watching, I somewhat apologize. 
Can you please send me every single issue of this manga pretty please with a cherry on top? This manga series supposedly lasted from April 2015 to February 2016, meaning there is most likely more than just this one issue, making them all lost media as nowhere online as anyone documented them. Guess it's time to book a flight to Japan to find those lost issues. The only other content we have outside of the first issue is this promotional image of Kai with a bunch of other manga characters who I do not know at all, and what is most likely the cover of a different issue, showcasing that the manga featured at least one issue with Chen. Which leads me to think, since this manga lasted from 2015 to 2016, does that mean it also featured a manga Moro and a manga Nadakan? I don't know if I even want to see this guy in a manga style. Stepping away from Japan, let's look at what is probably the most well-known piece of Ninjago Lost Media, being the original idea for the Ninjago movie. Instead of being a fish themed mess, the original plot of the Ninjago movie was meant to be a time travel movie, with the six ninja travelling back in time to stop Garmon from being bitten by the Great Devourer, being sure to sell a few toys in their adventure of course. We all know what a major flop the actual Ninjago movie was, if only that version became Lost Media. So reading about the scrapped original idea, I can't help but feel incredibly disappointed, and it is miles better than what we got in the end. Maybe if I shake this enough it'll become the original. 2017 really wasn't a good year for Ninjago, with the Ninjago movie being, well, the Ninjago movie, and the first half of the year giving us Hands of Time. Along with giving us Hands of Time, LEGO also graciously gifted us four shorts as part of Operation Heavy Metal, but they just forgot to translate them to English. Operation Heavy Metal consisted of four shorts, centered around the main four Vermilion characters, Machia, Blanc, Ragmunk, and Buff Million. This is what the peak male body looks like. These four shorts were only uploaded to LEGO's YouTube channel in Chinese, with their English versions forever being lost and becoming lost media. That was until 2022, when series creator Tommy Andresen extended his hands from the heavens and graciously bestowed upon us the English versions of these shorts. These shorts aren't really that substantial I would say, but it's still nice to get them in English. I suppose they're no longer lost media but now found media. We're not finished with lost media related to Hands of Time yet, as there's still one thing to cover, the original ending for the season. The ending we received involved Kai and Ia being dropped into the present with a reversal blade, as Wu and the time pins were presumably lost in time, but the original ending is a lot different than could have served as the end of the entire show. This alternate ending included Kai and Ia fighting the time pins on the Iron Doom, with Kai wielding the reversal blade from the past and striking the machine's clock, with the two ninja letting go and returning to their present, curing Wu of his aging problem. Crooks and the Chronics decided to travel 200 years in the future, when the ninja would surely be dead. Upon arriving 200 years in the future, Crooks and the Chronics are shocked to find an old Kai waiting for them. Kai then explains that when he hit the clock with the Time Blade, he slowed down their travel, with them only jumping 40 years into the future. The Time Blades are then suddenly lifted from the Iron Doom and it is revealed that the Time Twins have been trapped inside an invisible Cryptarium 2.0, with the other ninja and their kids showing up. With the season and possibly even the entire show, ending with the old ninja walking away. This is a pretty crazy ending to the season if you ask me. I actually really like it, with the season coming full circle. In the beginning it was Wu waiting on a Chronix, and in the end it's the ninja waiting for the time twins. Having the ninja be old and even have their own kids really makes us feel like this was going to be the ending for the show, or at least our main six ninja, because how the hell are the ninjas supposed to fight a bunch of bikers if they break their backs picking up their swords? I guess after this season the ninja could have been replaced by their children making the ninja themselves become lost media. Moving on from season 7 to season 8, we have the infamous case of Mystery's true identity originally going to be Echo Zane. Brent Miller, the voice actor for both Zane and Echo Zane, released a partially animated reveal of his identity, along with the voice lines that he recorded for the confrontation between the two. Sadly, we all know that this idea was tossed into the gutter, as Mystery ended up being a generic random ninjoid, which sucks as this idea of him being Echo Zane is so much cooler. Sure, it presents a lot of issues as to how that would work with Skybone being erased and Echo Zane being left on the lighthouse, but come on, that would have been awesome to see. It would have been so interesting to see how the rest of the season would have panned out with this being the case, along with Crystallized. It truly is a shame that this idea was given the boot. Let's leave the TV show alone for a little bit as we should focus on the lost sets and other products, such as a goddamn Ninjago PSP. Okay, I'm kidding, that's just stolen from the Ninjago style guide, but did you know we are going to get a Twitchy Tim set? This set would have been in the same style as the Clutch Power set, being just a minifigure accessory pack. Thanks to the wonderful Ninjago magazine, we actually know what the Twitchy Tim minifigure would have looked like, featuring a new torso and head print, unfortunately using the improper hairpiece. I'm guessing this set would have come with at least four figures like the Clutch Powers one, with two being Keepers and the last being a Legacy Kai again. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if they did that. Continuing with the lost sets, we have the Serpentine Train, a set that was wrongfully taken from us before we could have it. 
Another set wrongfully taken from us is Lord's Treehouse. Actually, I'm okay with this set being lost. But the next set could have been really cool. Pun intended, as that set is a Monastery of Ice. This set would have been for Season 8, but because it just didn't fit into the storyline, was cast into the void and the Jago lost media. It's a shame this set never came to be, as I really like the design of the Tan Temple being on top of a snowy mountain, with the figures of the set possibly giving us exclusive winter themed outfits for the ninja, which could have been neat variants to get. Before we continue to the next piece on the Jago Lost Media, why don't we look at something that isn't lost? The subscribe button. See? It's right there. So why not go ahead and click on it? Well, with you now hopefully subscribe, you have gained access to the rest of the video, which brings us back to the show to talk about some content that just never happened, such as the Jago Christmas shorts. According to the Ninjago Wiki, in 2012 Tommy and Dresden wrote 5 Christmas shorts that were never made because of a lack of budget. At least we did eventually get some Ninjago Christmas content, with this one Merry Christmas poster and of course the employee only gift. Another project of Tommy that never happened because Lego wanted to keep all the money was the remake of the pilot episodes in movie format for Ninjago's 10 year anniversary. I think this could have been a great idea, giving the pilots a much needed fresh coat of paint. I'm not sure if they would have kept the original designs or replaced them with the current designs. I honestly wouldn't have minded either. It would have been a great way to celebrate 10 years, getting to relive the nostalgic feeling of watching the pilots for the first time again. And now we have arrived at our final piece of Ninjago Lost Media to discuss today, being a Legends of Shima and Ninjago crossover. Yep, all those clickbait thumbnails and titles are actually true. This crossover short would have began with Jay watching the Chima show on TV before falling asleep, with Jay dreaming that he and the other ninja are in Chima. Of course, in typical crossover fashion, the two type of heroes fight, the ninja using Smejitsu and the Chima character is using Chi, with an apparent use of Chi powered Smejitsu, which could have been really cool to see. In the end, Jay wakes up for his nightmare stream and accidentally calls Nia Eris. This short would have confirmed Jay as a furry. It would have been great to get this crossover, seeing all the Ninjago and the Chima cast interact with each other could have been so cool. But I suppose they never went through with it, as Logo didn't want Chima's failure spreading to Ninjago. And so there we have it all the Ninjago lost media that we currently know of. Of course, with the topic being lost media, there's probably a lot more out there that we don't know of. Like, hey, maybe there's an alternate Chinese version of every Ninjago episode, and not just Dave the Departed. Honestly, I should have included the crystallized whip in this video. Seriously, that thing might as well be lost media at this point. 